Let's take a moment right now, right where we are, and begin to praise the name of the Lord. Hey, man, we serve a God that can break every chain, every circumstance that you're dealing with right now. He is right there with you. We praise his holy name here together tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God is worthy. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. We have, uh, amen, we have certainly missed having all of you here uh, with us in service. Amen. When we used to have the old lights up top, we, uh, we used to get this place so, uh, uh, the bass pumping and everything going here in the service that we thought that we were losing light bulbs and actually it just turns out that we were loosening them. And I miss, uh, I miss having uh, you in here. I miss having that shaken environment where we all come together and worship the name of the Lord together. Man, we, we want to thank you for being so faithful with watching us online and joining us together over the phone line. Amen. We thank you so much for that and being so understanding. We can't wait to be able to get together, back together with you into the house of the Lord. Amen. And we're looking forward to that. Amen. And I want to as well extend condolences to the Tompkins family. Sister Tompkins, you're in our prayers. Amen. And uh, we love, uh, we love you and your family and uh, mean so much to us. I was telling Pastor just before the service as he told me the news that I don't know if my family and I would be into the church if it was not for you and Brother Tompkins. Uh, my grandmother, she started into the church and uh, underneath your ministry, and I'm so, so thankful to have you in my life here today, and I give you honor, amen, and we'll continue to keep you in our prayers, amen. I've been asked to preach the word of the Lord here tonight, and um, and I, uh, I'm going to be speaking on this topic here tonight, shut up, shut up. Turn to the person beside you if you're near somebody and say, shut up. No, you shut up. <laughs> the Bible tells us of a story about a people that were shut up inside a fortified city, trembling in fear of attack. We can read about it in Joshua chapter 6. It tells us in verse 1, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass... That when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So tonight, just for a moment, I want to talk to you about being shut up. And I'm going to pray that God would have his hand upon the rest of the service. And we, we entrust it to his care and to do as he wills. God, we are so thankful to be able to join together with each and every one that's watching and listening online here tonight, all of those that are with us. God, I pray right now that you would have your hand upon us. God, and I pray that you would let your word speak mightily into our hearts here tonight. In Jesus' name, let your will be done in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jericho. It stood as a barrier to the promised land. It was the first great stronghold of the enemy that was intent on keeping God's people from obtaining the promises of God. You see, God had promised his people a land that would be flowing with milk and honey. And here, what st stood between them and it was this first barrier that they came to. As soon as they crossed the Jordan River as a nation... They came to the city. Its walls were built to withstand anything that an enemy could throw against them. It had a double wall construction. The outer wall was made of a retaining wall that kept the earth uh, fill in place and created a wide area of ground. And it was uh, in this area that many homes were built, including the home of Rahab that we can read about. 
the ground that was there, uh, where it was built upon, it, it was just an incredible thing to behold. It would have been. It was about 46 feet above ground level, and then it extended upward from there. So it seemed so fortified. It seemed so impossible. Those who lived inside of these walls were steeped in idolatry, living in constant fear of attack, but for many years had felt safe and invincible behind their great walls. The city remained well stocked, prepared for long sieges if an enemy were to attack. The important thing to notice is that in spite of their great walls of protection and in spite of their great number of mighty men of valor, the people of Jericho were cowering in fear, shut up inside their own city and afraid to venture forth. They had heard of the great and awesome power of the God of Israel. Word had spread far and wide about the God of Israel that dried up the waters of the Red Sea, that destroyed the entire war machine of the Egyptian army in a single battle. They heard about this God that led his people through the wilderness by a cloud and pillar of fire that had brought earthquakes, fire, and caused thunder and lightning on tops of mounds to signify his presence. They heard about this God. And now came the news that these Israelites had crossed over the Jordan on dry land and were now bearing down on the city of Jericho and were at their front door. And no matter how many men of valor or how thick their walls, the people of Jericho were afraid. They were terrified. Who can fight against this God? Who can defeat the God who rains down fire from heaven, who feeds over a million people for over 40 years in the wilderness, destroys the power of the greatest nation of, that, of their time, and then sets his sights on their city? It was a dark time for Jericho. There was simply no way out. Defeat, death, and destruction of their great city was imminent, and though they would fight to the last man to defend it, defeat was inevitable. It was also a time of literal darkness. The gates were shut up so that no one could get in, no one could get out of that city. On the inside of the gates, there was a brass bar holding the gates closed. Brass is a representation of judgment, and certainly the time of judgment had come to Jericho's front door. They were about to be called into account for all the sin of idolatry and their blocking of God's plan for his people. Jericho's predicament is much of like what we see in the world today. The whole world is caught up in a time of darkness. Maybe the story seems familiar to you. There is a spiritual darkness that keeps the minds of humanity from seeing the light of the truth. There is a feeling of dark hopelessness as mankind watches the things that are coming in the earth and they have no power to control them. Not only does it seem that nature has gone wild, but the nations are in great perplexity over their economic woes and fear of the full collapse of their governments. It doesn't take a whole lot of understanding to see that mankind is on the very edge of some very great calamities. The whole world cowers in fear, trying to find a place of peace and safety from the coming storms. Yet knowing that because of our own sinful nature, there are no long-term answers except for the Lord. While the worldly crowd refuses to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, they are constantly reminded and aware that Jesus has said that he is coming soon. The world may cry out that God is dead, that Jesus was nothing more than a man, and that the Bible is just a fairy tale. But the ever-present voice of the Holy Spirit is whispering in their hearts that it's all true. How many programs today are predicting great catastrophes on the earth? You can't watch anything for a whole day without seeing something that talks about the dark days ahead and all the possibilities of man's demise. There is a constant effort to disprove the prophecies of the Bible, and yet the efforts to disprove only serve to remind us even more that it is all true. And that's what really disturbs the world. 
the knowledge that God's word is true, no matter how much they try to prove that it isn't. No matter how much they may try to ignore what's happening or to deny that God's word is coming to pass, every day the events of life only serve to confirm what it says. The world is shut up within its gates of fear, within its walls of fear. There's a great sense of impending doom, but no one is willing to just give up and surrender to the will of God. Mankind, like those people in Jericho, are living without hope of deliverance, knowing that something terrible, something is ahead. Somehow, the devil keeps them believing that they will be all right until the day comes when they will die. There is only one power that can break through these great walls and locked gates that keep the world shut up in darkness. There is no power on earth that can do this. It can only be accomplished through the power of God. What are walls of stone or brass or gates to the God of Israel? When God wants to break through, there is nothing that can stop him. We serve a God of breakthroughs tonight. The children of Israel, underneath God's direction and Joshua's command, began to march around the walls of Jericho every day. There was a specific progression that had to be maintained. You see, God always has a plan for victory. He doesn't march into a fight, march into a battle without first knowing his game plan. Often the ways of the Lord appear weak or unplanned even in the eyes of the flesh, and we just can't see how God's plan could ever work. How in the world is marching around a city ever going to bring victory? How in the world is just going about like we have been ever going to win a victory? But we can never know the mind of Christ fully. His ways are far above our ways and past our understanding. We just have to trust and obey and let God fight his battles. After all, he's never lost a battle. The procession would be led by the armed men, the Bible tells us, of Israel before the seven priests who blew the trumpets, and then would come the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant with the rear guard following in behind them. So you can imagine it would be quite a sight as this progression went around the walls every day. It was not a parade. This was something that they were commissioned by God to do. They were doing it with purpose in every step. I can only imagine the warriors and rulers of Jericho standing on their wall, looking down at this crazy bunch of Israelites as they had their parade every day. I wonder if they thought that it was all just a show. I wonder if they were trying to figure out just what these Jews were up to. What was the God of Israel going to do? See, the world looks at Christ Christianity sometimes with the same eye. Those who serve themselves as if they were God and those who refuse to serve the true God. Look at those of us who are Christians as though we have lost our sense of reasoning. They question how we could believe in such things that are taught in the Bible. They think we are nuts for following holiness standards and doctrine. But let me tell you today that it is still necessary. But as Christians, we keep marching around the walls of darkness knowing that one day every wall is coming down. There will come a day when every knee is going to bow, when every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We choose to do that now. Why would we wait when we know it's true? Before the seven priests went the armed men of Israel, I believe what we see here is God's plan for the spreading of the gospel in these last days. Who are these armed men? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you. The Bible tells us that the weapons of our war warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Tonight we don't have swords and shields. We don't have tanks and rifles and bombs. Those kinds of weapons have no impact on spiritual warfare that we fight every day. Our weapons are mighty through God with the power to pull down even the wall of Jericho that we might face every day. The weapons of our warfare are the word of God, which is our two-edged sword. 
that divides the soul and the spirit. This is our most powerful weapon, and it will never, ever fail. Somebody praise the Lord for that. It will never fail. The Bible tells us that the heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. But we also have the weapons of faith, hope, love, trust in God, and prayer. Nothing is impossible to the child of God who will learn to use the weapons that God has given to us. All of us are called to march forth into a dark world of sin, encompass the evil that fills the land, and be the light, as Pastor preached about this morning, be the light that this world so desperately needs. We are co to continue marching onward at the command of the Lord, watching Him dry back the power of evil. All of you are in the forefront of the march as the church is marching on to victory. And just like the people of Israel in front of Jericho, it may seem sometimes that we aren't accomplishing very much for the kingdom of God, but just keep marching. Even when you question whether or not you are making any headway, keep marching. Even when you feel like people are mocking and making fun, keep marching. You have been directed by God to follow His ways, His directives. There's nothing more, there's nothing more important than that. Keep marching. This is God's battle, and He knows what He is doing, believe me. All God asks for is obedience and faithfulness to do His will. The church is getting ready for the shout of victory. The time will come when the walls are coming down, and people are going to see that God has been leading us all the way. Behind the armed men came the seven priests blowing the trumpets, this is a picture in my mind that speaks of the preaching of the truth of the gospel in all of its fullness. God is calling forth the people who will proclaim his name and cry out for truth to be heard. There is no room for compromising the gospel if we want the walls of sin and darkness to come down. We are to proclaim God's word and when the fullness of time has come, after we have marched around the walls of sin long enough, when God's plan is fulfilled, then will come the final march and the shout of victory. The priests, they were blowing ram's horns. Ram's horns in the Old Testament were called the shofar. This horn was a means of signaling across great distances. And it often was used to send a warning of impending trouble or even a call to worship. As the priests marched around Jericho, they were constantly sounding the shofar. Every time the Israelites heard this sound go off, it was a reminder to them that there was a call within them to do what they had been called to do. There was something within them that said, this is what God has called me to do. This is what we're going to do. It was a constant reminder to them of their call. And as the priests marched around Jericho, they were constantly sounding the shofar, warning the people of Jericho of God's impending judgment upon their city. God, he never brings judgment without first giving plenty of warning. The people of Jericho had six days of warnings, six days that they could repent of sin and surrender to the God of Israel, six days that determined what their destiny would be. But for all six days, they remained shut up in their city and would not surrender. We, as the church of the living God, are marching around the world today blowing the shofar. Oh, we may not have a literal ram's horn on our lips, but we are proclaiming the day of the Lord is coming. We are crying out against sin. We are crying out for repentance, warning people of the impending judgments of God. You see, every time you witness to someone, you are blowing the shofar. Every time I stand behind this pulpit, I'm blowing the shofar. Our call to worship is the sound of music and the lifting of our voices in praise. Our call to gather for battle is a prayer meeting or it's a message that exposes the power of the devil. Our preaching of the gospel is the sound of the spiritual shofar. Let the world know that the walls are coming down, that judgment is coming, and that God is about to break through a world of darkness and destroy the power of the enemy once and for all. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, it tells us in a moment, this is a prophecy, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. 
For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Somebody praise the Lord for that here tonight. We shall be changed. Following close behind is the Ark of the Covenant. It represents the presence of God. It was to be carried on the shoulders of the priests. This is to let us know that there is a promise of God that will never fail, that will be with their people. God promised that he would pour out his spirit on all flesh so that we don't have to go through this life alone. We have God's spirit working on us, working in us, going before us. And what's more important is that Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross and his sacrifice for the sin of the whole world is our covenant. We are to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are to proclaim the power of the blood of Jesus to cleanse from sin and drive back the darkness, overcoming the power of Satan. The covenant of his precious blood. Without the covenant, without the blood, our marching and preaching and sounding the spiritual horn will be nothing but a parade without power. Our time is too short to just have a parade. It's too important to just be entertaining behind the pulpit. The truth is too necessary. It's too urgent to just have an appearance of being godly but without power. We can't afford to be shut up within our sins. After the Ark of the Covenant came the rear guard. We need to be ever on guard to keep the covenant of the gospel message safe and pure. Never allowing anything to sneak into our doctrine that would compromise the message or water it down. We have to continue to preach against sin. It is our call. We have to continue to teach people to live a life of holiness unto the Lord. It is our call. We have to warn the world of the judgments that will come. We are to not give place to the devil in our midst. And this requires constant vigilance on all of us. Satan can attack from any direction, and we all need to be on guard so that we may sound the warning. And finally, after having marched around the walls of Jericho for six days, the seventh day dawns. I can imagine the excitement that would be in the camp of Israel that morning. Here we are the seventh day. This is when God said it would be. Seventh day. This would be the day that victory would finally be won and that Jericho would be no more. The people of Israel were commanded by God to shout in victory and blow the shofar. They were promised that when they did this, the walls would come crashing down. The shofar sounded a long blast. The walls fell. And every, every man went straight up from where he stood into the city to win the victory. It's not hard to see where this is going. I felt God speak to me a few weeks ago and told me that some have been marching around Jericho for a long time, waiting and wishing for things to change. Some of you have felt shut up. Shut up from the promises that God has for your life. Shut up from the healing that you are wanting, from the freedom that you want so much for your life. God, He wants victory for your life. But you have to be willing to give Him a shout of praise and victory even when you don't see the promise come to pass yet. Claim victory over that sickness. Claim victory over that addiction. Claim victory over that lost family member. And the church has marched around this old world of sin and darkness called Jericho long enough. The shofar is about to sa sound. We are in the seventh day. And as I come to a close... I want to bring this around to you here tonight. From where you're watching, from where you're listening. 
because the church is getting ready for the last call. The final blowing of God's shofar. Jesus is coming soon. And he gives us this final warning at the end of his word. This is his voice echoing today to us. I'm coming soon. There will be final call to his church to gather together with the Lord in the air and to go and be with him and worship with him forever in heaven. And I believe tonight that the trumpet is at the lips of the Lord and he is taking a breath. We are that close to the final call and the great shout of victory. When the trumpet sounds, there will be shouting on the hills of glory. Every born again child of God that has kept themselves from the influence of sin will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, clothed in robes of righteousness. What a shout will be heard on that day. My call here tonight to you is to not be shut up in the walls of sin. Be ready to be caught up with the Lord. There is coming a day when Jericho, this old world of sin, will be utterly destroyed. The power of darkness will be broken. And all who refuse to get out of Jericho and get on the Lord's side will perish with it. I tell you tonight that the walls are about to fall. Those walls that you seem to have been stuck around that have haunted you. If you just give that to God. If you just trust God with it and let it go into his hands, I believe tonight that there will be victory in your life as you give praise and adoration to him, as you begin confessing that he is able. He is able to meet every need that you have here tonight. He's able to free you from the bondage that you've been so stuck in. Amen. And he's able to give you freedom and liberty in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we're going to pray here right now together and we're going to believe that together that there will be freedom in your life that there will be liberty that you've never experienced before amen let's just do that right now god we're so thankful god we're so thankful for your word she is we're so thankful lord for what it represents in our life god it is your voice speaking to us and we're listening god we're listening lord we ask right now that you would touch each and every person that's watching and listening online God, but you know that there have been some that have felt stuck, that have felt shut up. God, and they need your help to break through their circumstances. They need your help, God, to get out of the place where they're in. God, and we praise you here right now, Jesus, for that victory in advance. God, we believe you for it here tonight. We claim it in your great name. Let your will be done here tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're doing as we call on your great name. Hallelujah, Lord. Just where you're at here right now, make an altar in your home. Make an altar wherever you're at and begin to give God some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy of it. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we pray, God, we pray Lord, that you would break in. God, break in through every circumstance in our life that's holding us back. God, that's holding us back from you. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we surrender, Jesus. We surrender every single part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's it. God loves your worship. He loves your, your shouts of victory here tonight. He wants to change your life. He wants it to be a transformation in your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank you so much for joining with us here online. Amen. And I don't know if you feel it where you're at, but I feel the presence of God. And... Hallelujah, Jesus. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for what God is doing. We can't wait to be able to be back together with you in service. We're looking forward to that. Tune into our service on Wednesday as pastor preaches the word of the Lord. 
in our Bible study, we've been doing a series on a love that lasts. And God has been stirring our hearts and making us dig in deep into his word. And we're so thankful for that. So don't miss it. It's going to be a great, great message. Amen. And we are looking forward to that. Thank you so much for once again for joining with us. We will see you on Wednesday joining with us again. Amen. And uh, please take note of that, that it will be online only, but we will be back for Friday night prayer. And once again, uh, we'll be back in services on Sunday. We're looking forward to seeing you. And God bless you. Thank you so much for joining with us tonight.